Hey everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With The Big Family Homestead, and today we're talking about foul things. Chickens. Chickens. Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. Maybe not of chicken. That's wool. Wool, wool. We're talking about chickens today. <laughs> we have had chickens for how long now? Five years? Six. Six years, Six. and we are going to give you the dirt we're gonna give you the dish on the mistakes we have made so that you don't go down that same silly path. Right. So mama's got a list right here. That's her chicken list. I can't read it now, you crumpled it. Well, first things first. What is the first thing on your list? <laughs> the first thing on your list, and this is going to be a controversial thing. No, save that one for later. Save that one for later. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, this was one that Claire came up with. Make sure that you collect the eggs every day. Same time. Same time every day. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter to the chickens when they're laying them, but just that they know, hey, there's somebody coming in and taking my eggs and yada yada and yippy skippy. Yeah, and if you, if you don't do that, you'll find that the chickens will find unusual places to hide them. Uh, yes, if you have an oh, if there's too many eggs in the nesting box, then they'll find other places to lay them. Um, and like, you'll find them long after they are odiferous. Oh yes, quite disgusting. Stinky, actually. stinky, rotten eggs, and so save yourself this heartache, people. Yeah. Save yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next one is to not to have too many roosters. Yep. Yep. Because they will fight. Well, and they overstress the hens. If there are too many roosters, then you won't get any eggs. Yeah, they... Um, we had that happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and besides, then they're sharing the same ladies for their flock. <laughs> and... Um, They'll scratch the, the, the dickens out of them if, they're, if there's too much oh. competition for the same amount of ladies. Right. We had a couple of hens that were, uh, <clears throat> they had a lot less feathers than some of the others. They were favorites. Yes. They, they were, must have been the most attractive in the chicken world. How do you find, how does that work? I'm not a rooster. <laughs> how do I know? <laughs> but we've seen the results of having too many roosters. Yeah. Uh, and so don't do that. But No, generally, about, generally you have one rooster for about 10 hens. That you want to, you know. That you want to fertilize the eggs. And if you just want eggs, don't, don't get a rooster. Don't get a rooster. Yeah. No. So what's next, Mamacita? What's next is making sure that when you worm your, sorry. Making sure that you worm your chickens mm. at least three to four times a year. They, the eggs will start coming out gross and mm, dirty. Icky. And icky. That means your chickens have worms. So what we use is we use food grade diatomaceous earth and we just mix it in with their feed every couple of months. Well, about every three months. So mm -hmm. once a quarter. And it's about a tablespoon per bird. You just put it in their feed and mm -hmm. making sure though, when you put this diatomaceous earth in their feed, that it's not like poofing all over the place because you don't want to breathe it. You it's don't want bad it in for your, your lungs. eyes. Yep. On a microscopic level, they, they're really jagged. It's real sharp, sharp mm -hmm. stuff. Matter of fact, side note, not dealing with chickens. If you've got a problem with any kind of insect that has an exoskeleton, mm -hmm. um, diatomaceous earth will take care of them. It kills them. Yep. If they get in there between their plates, dries them out, cuts them up, done. Done, yeah. If you have ants in your house or hot, ugh, bed bugs, mm. yuck. Um, any kind of mite on your chickens, it's nice to sprinkle the DE into the bedding um, in their in their checking in their nesting boxes and in the chicken coop. Uh, that way, they dust in there and they get that DE on their skin and it kills any kind of mites or lice or anything you don't want on your chickens. Just don't breathe it. Right. What Just else? don't breathe it. Uh, <laughs> we have made the mistake of getting chick chicks too close to winter time. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. If you do, you're paying a an exorbitant amount of electricity to keep them warm mm -hmm. 
Um, you lose more birds. Uh, late fall is a good time, not late fall, sorry. S September, August, mm -hmm. September is a really good time to get chicks that way. You know, you're feeding them over the winter anyway, but most chickens don't give you eggs during the winter, so that's a good time to do that because mm -hmm. they're not going to give you they're not going to give you anyway. eggs anyway for five or six yeah. months. So. You're not losing out on your investment, right? Uh, exactly. But if you don't know of the J Null Zero channel, you should first mm -hmm. of all. Uh, but he is a chickenometrist. He's a chickenologist. Chickenologist. Yes. Chickenologist, mm -hmm. and he's got some really great ways that he takes care of his. He calls them biddies. Yes. The little biddy birds, and I believe that he actually took and uh, made a refrigerator box into uh, his brooder. Yeah. His, his brooder, and that works really well. The funny thing is, though, is that I actually saw the video and was talking to him about it and I misunderstood and thought that he actually used a refrigerator, refrigerator. or a so, freezer yeah so we went and got a free one <laughs> mm -hmm. and I put this thing in there and it was the greatest thing ever kept it insulated and all and then I was talking to John and he's like that's cool, but where'd you get that idea? I'm like, what is it? It's what it's, you do. What, yeah, no. He's like, no. no. <laughs> so, no. But it did work really well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next one. When you are letting your chickens out to range around in the, or I should say roam around in your yard, make sure you clip their wings. Clip their wings. Clip their wings. Otherwise, you're going to find them in your neighbor's yard. And if, lot. yeah, if your neighbor happens to have dogs, bad news let's just we, say we've experienced that it's yeah not pleasant and um now there is there is controversy over do you clip one side or both sides i clip both we do it's just they they, they basically can get a little bit off the ground only yeah. like a foot or so mm -hmm. after you you know two feet maybe yeah but they'll get running and phew, but um <laughs> That, yeah. That'll keep them from finding new and unusual lands to roam in. Well, and then they can't roost up in the trees at night. And Well, we put ours in a secured shed mm -hmm. so that there, there are no predators that come after them or um, goats that like to eat their feed. Yes. Zeus. Mm -hmm. He's a naughty, good, naughty, naughty goat. Very naughty goat. Mm -hmm. Naughty goat. Um, well, and that leads into the next thing about, you know, with clipping their wings so they're not flying into your neighbor's yard, is check the bottom of the fence line and make mm -hmm. sure your fencing is secured to the ground because they'll find ways under the fence because in our situation, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. Because <laughs> they scratched all theirs up. Right, right. So they've got... They've got a, there's grass out there in the yard, but right now we have them secluded to just a dirt patch. Yeah, we just um, reseeded the lawn and we're we're trying to keep at least from... give the yard a chance to come up before they destroy it again. Exactly, exactly. Are we time for the controversial one? No, not yet. Got a couple more. Okay. Um, when oh. you, what? Butchering? No, not that one. I'll do this okay. one first. Um, when you do mix your flocks together and you have some older birds and some younger birds please 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 make sure that your birds are about the same size yep. when you put them together um, not age age doesn't matter age doesn't size matter. it's the size because if you're putting little bitties that are maybe three or four weeks old in with full-size birds gonna, the full-size yep. birds will kill them yep. they will peck them and they will die and yep. it's very very sad it is and yes we've <coughs> made that mistake Oh, yeah, only once. So it only took once, and we yep. lost one bird because of it. Yep. <coughs> so what about um, <coughs> um, butchering birds? Here's the thing with butchering birds. When you're first starting out, it seems really awesome. We're going to be all nature people, and we're getting back to the skills, and we're doing the food thing where we're raising the meats and the whatnot, and, and you don't realize that it's going to take you a stinking long mm -hmm. time. It does. Uh, it does. And be prepared for that. That's, that's the thing, because when we first started out, I mean, it was traumatic, to be honest. Well, yeah. Um, our older kids were... <sighs> 15 teens yeah, yeah low teens and the second oldest boy passed out yeah he turned really white and see we've never been involved in anything like this before um i'm not opposed to hunting for food right. i have never been a hunter uh so i've never been involved in you know doing anything like that no nope. and um it was it was 
it was a little traumatic, but at first we, we were all tense, but we just, we wanted to make sure we didn't mm -hmm. do anything that was going to harm these animals any more than they absolutely had to go through. Right. Um, and we were very specific about it but one of the things is that it will take you time when you're beginning mm -hmm. i mean don't be surprised if four birds take you three hours right because if you don't have a plucker and you don't have a full line of people you know okay let's take you take off the legs you take off the head you take out the parts and you know it's it's one person doing the eviscerating and one person uh, catching the, ch the chicken and mm -hmm. another person it's it's a long process and it is it, it is tiring don't don't think that it's all fun and games and it's and, gonna and, and once, all Hollywood well and not. once you once you make the commitment once you once you're there and you've off that bird it's non-stop you, you gotta finish yeah you cannot just leave that bird that's that's no, wasteful. that'd be incredibly incredibly wasteful and disrespectful to that animal yeah Yep, so okay, let's go to the controversial one, Mama. Here's the thing, um, this is controversial because we know a lot of people that get their birds this way. Mm -hmm. This is our experience, yes. so so put your experience down in the comments below. Mm -hmm. um, but the advice we would give you is don't buy chickens from a uh, feed store. Feed store. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is those birds are handled by Everybody, little kids get sick. They come in there, handle the birds. Uh, they're dropped. Uh, many times they get diseases. They get nastiness, pasty butt, mm -hmm. um, broken legs, broken legs. And uh, we actually had a horrible in instance. What with um, we're not going to name the store. Last but. summer, we purchased uh, twenty five. Uh, meat birds and now we've raised meat birds for many years and have never we know had, what to do we know what to do we know how to raise them we know how they behave we lost within the first week we lost half of half them. yeah and and um so our advice is try to find a reputable mm -hmm. um breeder or a hatchery hatchery yes or if you know somebody that has chickens that might even be a better way mm -hmm. still because you're going to avoid all that kind of stuff and besides knowing where they come from is great yes uh, also if you know a good hatchery like the hatchery that's near us is called um mm -hmm. uh, mount healthy mm -hmm. and what's cool about them is you just call them you put in an order, I want X number of birds, mm -hmm. and they say, well, okay, okay, give us your credit card. <laughs> yeah, and you can pick them up on this day. Yeah. And so where there's- You just go and there they are. There's no there's no shipping, They're, the animals are day old chicks, mm -hmm. and I love hearing them. It's really cool. In the car. Yeah, it is pretty neat. They give you the little <laughs> box with mm -hmm. the holes in them and yep. stuff. Um, and and we've had just great success when we go that route. Yeah. Um, we do have our own um, incubator incubator mm -hmm. now, which I think we're going to start using that. Uh, yeah. But we got to get a, a, a set of meat birds first. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, guys, there we've we've done it. We've, We've told laid you. it out for you, the mistakes that we have made. All of the Don't stuff you them. see in our videos, it's not its not all polished. And, no, and no. We make mistakes just like everybody else. Yes. And so that's why we're sharing them with you, mm -hmm. so you don't do the stupid things we've done. Right. <laughs> share your stupid things down below. Right. Let's, let's share together our, our stupidness. <laughs> and then we'll be a little less stupid together. Exactly. We can be less dumb. Right. When we're with you. <laughs> so anyway, please don't forget to share the video, like and subscribe, and it truly does help our family out. Uh, and I'm Brad. I'm Krista. You guys go have an awesome, Amazing less day. stupid day.